Hello, and welcome to the Darby Creek Diaries. I'm Gail Thompson. A while back, I had a post about what card you'd like me to remake from the past, and the butterfly one here was chosen. Well, I'm not really good at making my own cards twice, but here it goes. You can see it's a little different, but the technique is the same. So first we need some watercolor. Now this is Ranger watercolor cardstock. Now there's a rough side and there's a smooth side. And that was what I was trying to show you there. Now, normally I would pick the smooth side, but for the textured appearance we're going for, I picked the rough side. Now all the supplies will be listed below and at my blog. Now back to the paper for a second. I like Ranger's watercolor paper because it's pure white. However, any kind of watercolor paper will do. And I'm just putting some Versamark clear sticky ink on the stamp and we're going to be stamping on vellum. So I'm going to get out my powder tool, which is absolute necessity to get rid of static electricity. And I'm just going to stamp it on there firmly. Now my table has a little bit of give to it. And so I really, really have to press, but you probably would not have to do this. While you're watching, I just wanted to mention, I'm going to be going to Stamp Away in Cincinnati, Ohio on August 11th. And I'm gonna be taking lots of pictures and some videos of some of the tutorials. And uh, I'll see if I can interview some people. I think Tim Holtz might be there, he usually is. Um, so. You might want to stop back and there's my Instagram address. I'm going to initiate my new account. So don't forget if you're not a subscriber, check back. But if you are, all you need to do is click on that bell and you will get a notice every time I post something. Just um, a reminder, I let my heat tool heat up for about 15 seconds before and I keep it moving, especially on vellum, to avoid the warping. And see how beautiful that turns out? And I shake it to let it cool a little bit. Since I do have a kind of a dip in my table, I just wanted to show you the magazine that I stick under for some padding. Now it's time to break out my watercolors. These are the Kuretake Ganzai Tambi watercolors and they come in much bigger sets. But they are a wonderful, rich watercolor. I couldn't remember exactly which colors I'd use on the other cards, so I just took kind of a guess. And you just wanna add water to the pans that you're going to use. And by the way, when you're finished, you might wanna set it for a day off to the side with the lid kind of skewed on top to let it dry thoroughly. And now I'm just going to mix in the water, but I want to keep it a pretty heavy concentration. And now I'm just going to load an acrylic block. It could be any size, whatever shape you want. This one just happens to be square. And I'm just loading it with the watercolor. And now I'm gonna use that mystery color. I'm not real sure what that color is. It's all in uh, Japanese. And I wanted to blend it at the middle. So now we're gonna take our watercolor paper, the rough side, and just stamp. And you push on it really hard. And in order to let that soak in, you wanna put something heavy on it for a little bit. I did it too long and it stuck. But here is the finished square. And now I'm gonna use a double stitched rectangle and just put that in my Sizzix and cut it out. That's a little bit different than the other card as well. Now you can always add more if you didn't like the color on your uh, finished project, you can always add more and restamp over it. So now I'm just kind of sizing up the situation. I cut off camera, I fussy cut the butterfly for you. And now I'm just gonna put the sentiment on and I'm using one of these cool plastic templates that you can either print from my favorite, my sweet petunia, or you can buy it from Simon Says Stamp. And it helps you kind of line things up 
you just lay your words on there and that way you know you kind of have a straight line now i'm not perfectly centering this i eyeball everything you know me the least amount of measuring now that little mess on that second stamp that amazing i had that sitting on top of my ink and it just uh stuck and it took the color off when i pulled it off but i always lose clear stamps they always are you know, I can't find them. So I sat, sat it on that ink pad and now I have to clean it up. So I'm using a pool color ink and just stamping on my sentiment. I used a Misty, you wouldn't necessarily have to. And now we're just gonna put this puppy together and this is where the wheels kind of fell off on that matching of the first card. I just got going and wasn't paying attention. Now this Lawn Fawn glue tube is awesome, but it doesn't give you a ton of wiggle room. It gives you enough for normal situations. My situation apparently isn't normal because it did not give me enough time to fix what you'll see here in a minute. So I just center it for my little background frame there, eyeballing it of course. And now the butterfly, I just, I want a little flat spot. So on his body, on either side, I'm kind of creasing it. So there's a place to put the glue and it's kind of flat. And then you want to use just a little tiny bit of glue. It will dry clear, but it wouldn't matter anyway, because if there's glue through the whole thing, you don't seem to see it. And I'm just going to position it on the card and just kind of hold it there for a second and just weight it down and now we're going to this is exactly where the wheels fell off I put it on sideways I don't think anybody but you and I will notice and shh, don't tell anybody see my butterflies the wrong way and the colors are the wrong way but hey I think it's still pretty. So now we're just going to fluff up our wings. And then I decided there was too much space at the bottom. So I'm going to make the card a hair shorter. Nobody will know once again, but us. Now this cutter doesn't really like to do this with Nina. This is Nina 110. I had kind of a hard time cutting that with it. So next time I probably wouldn't do that. Now I'm going to put on some jewels. These are ice crystals and they reflect whatever colors behind them. And they're just, they're iridescent and they're just gorgeous. I can never decide. It's one of the hardest parts of a card. I can never decide where to put them. I don't know how some of these people just make it gorgeous but anyway there's the card i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you'll give it a try it's it's a lot of fun and once again come back and see me for the stamp away stuff i'll be doing stuff before then as well and i hope you consider subscribing commenting liking sharing with your friends i'm also going to post a couple of videos here that i think might also interest you and for now, I will leave you to your crafting. You have a fabulous day and come back and see me. Bye-bye.